going on a little walk. Um, one of the most common questions when you first talk to an XJW is what woke you up? Um, and it's usually not one issue, it's usually a bunch of little things that all piled up until uh, it was too much and something had to give. Uh, the Mormons talk about their shelf-breaking moment. They gotta put all your doubts and whatever on a shelf and eventually the shelf gets too heavy and it falls off the wall. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good analogy. Um, I'm not gonna give the full thing all in one go because uh, it'll be an hour and a half long ramble, but one of the earliest things that stands out to me um, I can talk about because it was a distinct thing. Um, everybody has doubts and uh, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of accounts in the Old and New Testament about people having doubts. Like it's baked into the Bible that you have doubts and you get over it. So anyone, even believing witnesses will admit, of course we all have doubts. I just ignore them. So I had my own set of doubts. Uh, but what was a, a, a threshold I crossed was I was at my grandfather's house at one point and we were just hanging out there and I found on a, in a stack of books a little little pamphlet about that big, like, I don't know, 20 pages. And it was from the 60s from a pastor. And it was a why are the witnesses wrong little primer. And my grandparents were never baptized, although they did study with the witnesses, so they were nominally connected. Um, and so I was curious. I was like, why did you keep this, Poppy? What? I didn't ask him, but I just like kept it to myself. And I was like, why did you, why did you keep this? Um, so since it was from the 60s, and he'd kept it on a bookshelf and it was from a pastor I was really curious um, so I looked at it the normal apostate fear or fear of apostates uh, didn't kick in because I'm like this is from you know 50 plus years ago how convincing could it be so the first couple of things are like the witnesses are wrong and Jesus is definitely God and the Trinity is real and I go oh, okay that's silly. And uh, that made me keep going, because I mean, like, the first couple things were, were doctrine, theological related stuff, and it didn't, it didn't bother me. They were probably right. I mean, the, the witnesses are the theologically probably wrong about the Trinity, although I, I don't believe in God or the Bible. I am an atheist. But uh, if you're arguing within the sphere of Christianity, the Trinity's probably right. Something like that. Anyway, uh, I moved on a few points. None of those bothered me, so I kept flipping through it. And I get to one where it says, um, I forget the publication, but I think it was, it was either Deliverance or Vindication, one of the early 1920s books from the witnesses slash Bible students. And it said that on this page, it says that Jehovah's throne is obviously within the Pleiades constellation, which is at the center of the universe, and so it is right that we pray towards it. And that caused, oh boy, what a cognitive dissonance, existential panic that caused, because uh, that's stupid. Like, that's objectively stupid. Uh, <laughs> from a doctrine standpoint, why would you say that? There's no basis in the Bible to say that if you're a believing Christian. And from just like a practical astronomy standpoint, what a stupid thing to say. The constellations are just arbitrary shapes in the sky. And just because they all look clustered together, the stars, oh, they all look clustered together from our point of view, they can be spread out over an enormous column of space. Like, none of those stars might be anywhere close to each other. Does he just have, does Jehovah just have this incredibly long, 
cylinder of space that is his throne room? It's so dumb. <laughs> and we should pray towards it? How? It's in three-dimensional space. Do I pray facing the ground? If you're, I don't know, if you're in Australia? It just, like, the layers of stupid were ro uh, faith rocking. It was, uh, it's like, it can't be true. This has got to be made up. Uh, so, I crossed a threshold in that I looked online. Thank you, Google. Thank you, uh, Internet. And uh, I found a PDF of the book on archive.org, I think. Someone had uploaded PDFs of the old publications, went to the page number, and, well, fuck, it's true, there it is, oh no, they believed stupid, stupid stuff, oh no, um, and that was, suddenly all of my little doubts are coming, ooh, coming to the top of the mind, and it's, ooh, that was real scary, and, uh, I, put it away, you know? I just put it in the back of my mind. I had other stuff to worry about, other stuff to think about. Uh, mm, you know, old light. It's old light. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. But it never got out of my head. It was always in the back of my head that at one point, after 1919, it was after Jesus is, uh, you know, Jesus is driving the bus at this point, supposedly. This is all Jesus-approved material, and Jesus approved, uh, <laughs> supposedly, of the dumbest, the dumbest teaching. So stupid. It's uh, just objectively insane. Um, and that is a real... Ooh, hard to justify that if you're believing in Holy Spirit being the guiding force here. Uh, and so that's stuck in the back of my mind. And by doing that research, like the other thing that allowed me to do research on that was, this is a this this pamphlet is from the 50s, or 60s, um, 50, 50 plus years ago. And uh, there's no way that it was fake because this guy is not gonna make fake publications to try and trick the witnesses. So this scan is real. This is a real book right now. Real book right now that I can look at. And I know that it hasn't been faked by apostates to make the witnesses look dumb. It's real. And so that made me not doubt other information, other scans of pu old publications, which is the greatest weakness of the Watchtower Society, is that they've published some absolute bonkers stuff. Um, but yeah, now I'm not doubting. The next time I did research, I wasn't doubting or dismissing, like, oh, obviously these are fake publications to make the witnesses look stupid. No, they're real. They're real. Um, and by doing that research, it made it easier the next time to look things up. So, um, I put that away for probably a couple years, um, before I woke up, but, uh, it stuck with me. It made it very hard. I was, uh, in constant crisis. Um, not constant, but a lot of the time I'm like, oh no, I don't know if I believe, I don't know, I don't know. But I didn't have enough to push me over the edge into doing other research, to do the fateful Google search of, like, our witnesses a cult. That came later. But that was a big chunk, so thank you, Poppy, for not throwing away that pamphlet, and thank you 1960s priest for putting it together. That was helpful. Good on you. Good job, guys. Um, but that was the little little stone that started the avalanche. And uh, next one, I guess, will be a, a longer ramble about COVID, because that, that was a big help. Anyway, start of the waking up process. Uh, it doesn't take much, just a, just a little, just a little peak, and uh, once you do, the, the cracks only get larger. That was a very bad mixed metaphor. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Uh, I'll see you next time.